All right. Well, hey, my name is Mark White, and I'm the training manager for Duncan Parnell. We're the Trimble Geospatial Dealer uh, in the southeast from Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, up to Virginia. And on the line with me, I have Ray Wu with Trimble. Uh, she works on the TBC team. And we just want to talk to you a little bit this morning about uh, grid to ground coordinates and, and how those can affect your survey data. So, I know for myself as a surveyor, uh, I tend to learn things visually. So I got a few slides I want to look at just to give you guys some images of what we're talking about. Take a quick look at TBC. We'll only spend about five or six minutes doing discussion and then we uh, will take your comments. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and type them in the comment section and we'll get to them um, just as soon as we're done with this short presentation. So. First thing is, you know, when we survey, we're surveying up on the ground, right? When I measure with a total station, like the slide here uh, has a total station and a prism on it, but we could be using our GNSS unit or whatever we have. But when we're surveying, we're surveying up on the ground, right? But whenever we're dealing with a real world coordinate system, you know, whether it's state plane in the U.S. or you're using um, a projection in another country or something like that, whenever we're using a real world coordinate system, there's actually three measurement surfaces that we really get into. The first one's on the ground where we're actually doing the measurements. But then we have an ellipsoid with any real world coordinate system that's going to define um, the math behind the coordinate system we're using. So the ellipsoid is just a mathematical model of the uh, Earth that's designed to approximate the Earth's surface. But because it's nice and smooth and the ground's definitely not smooth, they don't quite line up. Um, and then to make the math a little bit easier for drawing maps so we can use Cartesian coordinates, we take that ellipsoid and we flatten it out into a grid. And then it makes it easier because we can use X, Y just to measure up and over to do our mapping there. So three surfaces, we have the ground where we actually survey. We have the ellipsoid, which is the mathematical model of the earth that kind of tries to best fit the ground, but can't match up exactly. And then we flatten that ellipsoid out into a grid in order to make the math a little bit easier. And it's easier to draw a map on a, on a flat surface there. And what we actually Mark, do. Yeah, go ahead, Ray. Sorry to interrupt, but it uh, seems like uh, all three measurements are commonly used in a uh, real world. Can you yep. give an example of a commonly used grid plane? Uh, you mentioned state plane. Can you give us some more examples of these grid projections? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of times in, in the United States, we use the U.S. state plane system um, for most survey jobs. Uh, Universal Transverse Mercator or the UTM mm -hmm. is a worldwide projection that a lot of people use. And then most of the time in most countries, you have, you know, smaller countries might have their own national grid system as well. But all of those are found in TBC, found in um, Trimble Access, so you can choose your coordinate system there. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. So basically to reduce our data in between these different measurements, what we use are scale factors. And there's two main scale factors that we have to deal with. We have the elevation factor, which reduces ground distances to ellipsoid distances. And then we have the scale factor, or some people call it the grid factor, to reduce the, uh, the ellipsoid down to the grid. Now, in the example I have here, you see the three distances. I have the ground on top, then the ellipsoid, then the grid. Depending on where you are, the ellipsoid could be higher than the ground or the grid could be higher than the ellipsoid. For this example, I just chose to keep it simple. We got ground, ellipsoid, and then grid. But we've got those two scale factors, the elevation factor to go from ground to the uh, ellipsoid, and then the scale factor to go from the ellipsoid down to grid. And if we hey, take Mark? the, yes. Sorry, for the elevation uh, scale factor, the name sounds interesting. Is it because it's related to the elevation of the actual measurement you did? That's yes. why it's called elevation? Yep, that elevation factor is dependent on the elevation or the difference between um, the ground surface and the ellipsoid surface. So if I flop back over to that page, it's, it is based on your elevation. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when I get into the settings like in TBC in just a second. But yes, okay. that is, is based on your elevation there. Mm -hmm. And then the scale factor is based on wherever you are along the ellipsoid, the latitude and longitude. So one's a vertical component, one's a horizontal component there. Mm -hmm. And then if we take that elevation and scale factor and multiply them together, we get what's referred to as a combined factor. 
And that combined factor will take us all the way from ground distances down to grid distance. What we use in TBC and in access is actually the inverse of the combined factor, and that scales grid distances up to ground distances. So when we set our coordinates up in a state plane grid or UTM or something like that, and we collect our survey data in grid coordinates, but we want an actual ground measurement, we use the local site settings in TBC and Trimble Access to scale those to ground, and that's actually using the inverse of the combined factor there. So real quick, I'll show you what that looks like in TBC. So I've just got a little project that's um, in TBC here. It's a small project done from a training class. One nice thing in Trimble hey, Business Center. Mark, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but we can uh, see your TBC screen. Can you move oh, it to okay, this thank you. monitor? Yeah, yeah, let me go back to Google Hangouts real quick. Oh, where's that? There we go. There's Hangouts. Yeah, let me switch it over. Sorry about that. Presenting. So let me stop that presentation and open up. Let me just do a window and swap it over to TBC for you real quick. There it is. All right. Allow. Sorry about that. Yeah, now we're in TBC. Okay. No problem. Yeah. So just a small project here done from a training class. And like I said, one nice thing that TBC added back in version five um, is the ability to see down here at the bottom of the screen what coordinate system I'm working in. So I can see down here that I'm in international feet. I'm using grid coordinates and it shows me the state plane zone I'm using or the coordinate system. So New Mexico Central. Uh, so right now this project is using grid coordinates. But if I go to the survey tab, I have an option for local site settings here. And what that allows me to do is just highlight my northing box. I can go over here and I could use any point in the job. I'll use point uh, 12 because that's where my base was. And then I can come over and select it for the northing, easting, and the elevation. And now this is where, like Ray pointed out earlier, if I'm using um, my elevation factor is dependent on the elevation of the project. So if I had a job that had a lot of relief on here, I would want to use average elevation. And that's why in TBC, it makes me select the northing first and the elevation second. It doesn't select them both at the same time because it's kind of prompting you and letting you know that, hey, if you choose this for the uh, horizontal location, grid and ground are going to be equal at that point and everything's going to scale distance wise out from there. But I could choose a separate elevation or I could even key in an average elevation for my site so that that elevation factor is computed properly. So, Mark, you're suggesting that if you're uh, dealing with a large project where yeah. um, on one end of it, the elevation is super high and on the other end, is uh, the elevation is super low, you may yeah. want to consider using an averaged elevation, not an elevation exactly. from a single point, right? Right, exactly. So that you've got something that's kind of more representative for your whole site in order to, to balance that scale factor out. The other thing you could do is even horizontally here, I just picked my base point because it's only 500 feet across the site. But if I had a very large site, I would probably want to pick a point that was closer to the center of the site. Again, just so my scale factor averages out over the site. And if you don't have a point you actually surveyed in the center, you could use, you know, you could create a point using TBC, just using the CAD create point command, um, or you could select your points and create an average and it'll give you a, you know, an average point in the center there, and then use that point to scale from as well. So those are some good things to keep in mind there. But once I have that location, I can check the box for use ground coordinates. Then I can either key in my own scale factor, or if I check this box, TBC will calculate it for me. Now you see here, we're up at about 4,100 feet elevation, and we're kind of in the middle of the uh, New Mexico central zone there. So we're actually scaling about 2,900 per thousand feet if I look at my scale factor. That's pretty significant if I didn't add that in. You know, sometimes I get the question of, hey, does it really matter if, you know, if I set my control with GPS and grid and then I just use a total station in a scale of one, does it really matter? Well, here, if I did that scenario, I set two pairs at either end of a traverse with GPS and grid. And then I just ran a total station at a scale factor of one. I'm going to have an error of 2,900 per thousand feet. So it's going to be really hard to close that traverse, right? So that's just, you know, how you can kind of see it practically done there in TBC. 
Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and throw it open to questions now if you'd like. Hey, Mark, I do have yes. a question. Yeah. So, so it sounds like um, the, best the best practice here might be you want to always use the grid coordinates for um, no matter if it's a GNSS measurement or a total station measurement, or you want to use ground coordinates for both systems so that right. they can be consistent with each other. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I always tell guys you should always be singing off the same page in the hymnal. So, you know, you don't want to play with apples and oranges. So just kind of keep things together because with Trimble, whether you're in Access or you're in TBC, um, if you've got the, the coordinate system set to grid, you're going to get grid coordinates. That's a common misconception a lot of surveyors have is if I'm using a total station, it's on the ground. If I'm using GPS, it's on grid. It's really in how your coordinate system set up. Um, so if, if I've got my data collector set to grid, it doesn't really matter if I'm using a total station or if I'm using GPS, I'm always getting grid coordinates. If I've got my uh, project set with a ground scale factor in it in here in TVC or in Trimble Access, I'm going to get ground coordinates. So you're exactly right. Um, a lot of guys have a tendency to do that where they'll set their control with GNSS, then switch over to the total station and they might not keep it in the same project or they don't match up the coordinate systems, but you're exactly right. That's the, the best way to do it is, is always stay on the same page. If you're doing everything in grid, do it in grid or everything in ground, do it in ground, no matter what you're using. All right, well, we're going to wrap things up, Ray. I appreciate all your help there. And, no um, you know, if you if you type your questions down there in the comments, we'll be sure to answer them again. Thanks a lot for, for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.